Hi, Adam Koo here. <clears throat> Hi, Adam Koo here and Happy New Year's. Welcome to this video on Market Forecasts and Opportunities 2018. For those of you who have been following me for quite a while, you know that at the beginning of every year, I'll talk about where the greatest opportunities are in the financial markets. So let's begin for 2018. Before I start, please read this risk disclaimer. This is not a recommendation to buy any of the mentioned securities. This is my own personal opinion and to tell you basically where I'm investing my money in. I'm just sharing it for educational purposes and entertainment purposes as well. So first of all, let's take a look at my forecast for 2017 and what did I get right. So if you uh, go to my YouTube channel, look at my playlist, you can watch my video on Opportunities and Outlook 2017. So I'm going to do a summary about what I forecast for 2017, what I got right, what I got wrong. So let's take a look at what I got right. First of all, uh, in 2017, this was my summary for the opportunities then. I said I was moderately bullish on US equities. Although valuations were high, but growth catalyst should give the bull run more room to run for now. So I believe that the US market will continue going up in 2017. Uh, next, I said that I'll be focusing on certain sectors that I believe would outperform, especially healthcare, energy, technology, specifically cybersecurity industry, financials, especially banks, industrials, especially robotics industries. I was moderately bullish on Singapore equities, which is my local market, as the Straits Times Index started on an uptrend and valuations were pretty attractive. I expected moderate growth and returns. I was very bullish on Hong Kong and Shanghai because they started a new uptrend and valuations were very attractive. Both markets were very undervalued, so I was very bullish on Shanghai and Hong Kong. I was also very bullish on the US dollar as compared to most of the Asian currencies as the Federal Reserve was expected to continue raising interest rates in 2017. I continue my bearish prospect of gold in the medium term because I believe as the US dollar increased in value, as interest rates went up, gold would continue going down. So that was my forecast. Let's take a look at what actually happened in 2017. So first of all, uh, where was I right? I was right in terms of the equities market basically. So in fact, all the global markets, both the developed markets and the emerging markets, achieved extremely strong gains in 2017, as you can see from this summary chart over here. Uh, the US market increased by 19.4% as uh, based on the S&P 500 index, and the Dow Jones, that represents the blue chip index, went up by a whopping 25.2%. So indeed, the US market was very bullish. It notched tremendous gains in 2017 as I anticipated. It was led by te technology, materials, financials, and healthcare, which again, I anticipated. So I was spot on on that. Next, Asian stocks outperformed the US markets. In fact, with a 35% return based on the MSCI Asia Pacific X Japan Index, which means all the Asian Pacific countries excluding Japan. The best performers were actually the Hang Seng Index from Hong Kong. The Hang Seng was up 35.99%. So I was spot on the Hong Kong market. I say Hong Kong will do well indeed, 35% one of the best years for Hong Kong. And Vietnam was one of the best emerging markets. Vietnam went up 46.9%. And that's why I bought a lot of property in Vietnam. I didn't buy stocks in Vietnam. I invested heavily in property in Vietnam. So made a lot of money from that. The Singapore market went up, as I anticipated, by 18%, which was the biggest gain in five years. And Shanghai did moderately well, up 6.5%. So I was spot on on Asia emerging markets as well. So where did I go wrong? I went wrong in a few places. Number one, I was wrong about the US dollar. I expected the US dollar to continue to go up as the Federal Reserve, again, was expected to increase interest rates. Remember that when a country increases interest rates, its currency would rise in value. Now, the trouble was the Federal Reserve did not raise rates as fast as expected because of uh, certain policy changes and inflation was not as high as they expected. Inflation was very low, so they were slow to raise rates and hence 
uh, the US dollar kind of like went down. Plus, uh, US foreign policy was not actually very accommodating. I mean, Trump made some <clears throat> provocative policy decisions that affected the US uh, role in the world, and that was bearish on the US dollar. Okay, so US dollar went down pretty much in 2017. <clears throat> the next thing I was wrong on was gold. So again, uh, gold is very much tied to interest rates and the US dollar. When interest rates go up, the dollar goes up, gold goes down. Okay, so I was wrong on interest rates, I was wrong on the dollar, so I'm wrong, wrong on gold. So I expected gold to continue going down, but in fact gold went up by 12.8% based on the gold <clears throat> ETF. Okay. Next, I was also wrong on the energy sector. So I expected energy to do well, but actually uh, energy underperformed by about 3% down. Okay, But overall, I made a lot of money because, again, you can't be right all the time. You just have to be right more than you're wrong. And again, at the beginning of the year, I can make all these forecasts and expectations. But at the end of the day, as an investor and as a trader, we never ever attempt to predict the market because the market cannot be predicted. No one can predict the market. We have a view, we have a forecast, but we always invest and trade based on the trend. The trend is our friend. So as long as the trend is up, we continue going long. If the trend reverses down, we get off our long positions and we go short. That's the important thing. Okay. So a quick overview on the markets. As you can see, this is the, these are the US market indices. The Dow Jones was up 25%, one of the best returns in the last uh, nine years, in fact. The S&P was up 19.4%. The Nasdaq, 28.2%. Outperformed the Dow and the S&P. According to several sectors, you can see the best performing sector was IT, information technology, led by you know, your Googles, your <coughs> Facebook, your Alibaba, and your Netflix. Followed by materials, did really well. Consumer discretionary financials, led by banks. As interest rates increase, banks will do very well, and that was something I got spot on as well. I invested a lot in banks, did really well in banks. Okay, healthcare came in at 20%, industrials did pretty well as well, consumer staples, and like I said, energy underperformed. Okay, <clears throat> let's look at some charts. So this is the S&P 500 for the last year, 2017. So the S&P finishes up 19.4%, again, another double digit return for the US markets. And in 2017, all three indices recorded historical new highs in the market. And so far, we have had the longest bull run in US market history, one of the longest bull runs. So far, this bull run has been nine years since it started in 2009 after the financial crisis. And so far, US markets are up a combined 300% since the start of this bull run in 2009. And all this is despite all the geopolitical tensions, right? The fight with North Korea, uh, Eurozone, uncertainty, populism, uh, Brexit, US political chaos. Despite all these things, the market keeps going up, all right? As you can see, it's on a very clear uptrend. If you have watched my videos where I teach you about how to identify the trend, uh, trend is identified by higher highs and higher lows. So as long as the market makes higher highs, as you can see, higher highs and higher lows, the uptrend continues. All right? as, as long as it's on an uptrend, we continue going along, we continue buying, holding the trend till it ends. Okay? We also read the trend through the moving averages. <clears throat> as long as the 50-day moving average, the blue line is above the 150 moving average green line and they're sloping up, the uptrend prevails. And notice that on a very clear uptrend, right, prices don't go up in a straight line. Nothing goes up in a straight line, okay? Prices always go in a wave pattern, kind of like breathing, you know? So you breathe out and you breathe in just like the market. So the market breathes out, can't breathe out forever, but breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, right? So every time the market breathes in, okay, we call that a pullback or retracement. Okay, and notice that every time the market retraces, it finds, right, breathe out, breathe in, it finds support at the moving averages. Okay, it is supported by the 50 moving average, as you can see. So every time the, the market comes down, hits the 50 moving average, it's time to buy, 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 write the new, 
impulse wave up, exit a bit at the top if you want to, if you're a short-term swing trader, let it come down again, buy more at the moving average and continue this pattern and you make money along the way. Or if you're buying whole investor, just buy and just hold it all along the way or do dollar cost averaging. So there's many ways to make money in a bullish market. Just buy and hold or enter during the dips, exit during the highs. The Dow finished up 25.2%, so that's the Dow Jones in the last one year. So the question is, what's driving the market? The market doesn't care about <clears throat> Kim Jong-un and Donald Trump both bragging who's got a bigger nuclear button, right? The market doesn't seem to care about Eurozone uncertainty, populism, doesn't really care about all these things, right? So what's driving the market? few things. Number one, you can't deny very strong earnings growth. Companies are growing earnings at spectacular rates of return. Okay, next, <clears throat> because of the Republican Trump administration, they've just passed the bill to cut corporate taxes from 35% corporate tax to 21% corporate tax. So what this means is US companies will now have a lot more profits to take in and by boosting their profits, it boosts their stock prices. Next, what's driving the markets are also low interest rates. As long as inflation remains low, the Federal Reserve does not have to raise interest rates as fast. With interest rates low, money is cheap. Companies can borrow money at a cheap rate <clears throat> to invest and grow faster. Consumers, investors with low interest rates can borrow and leverage and invest in stocks. So low interest rates combined with earnings growth drives the market higher and higher. Plus, we've got very strong jobs data from the US. Unemployment has been dropping from a high of 9 to 10% in the financial crisis to now 4.1%. Thanks to Mr. Trump. No, I don't think so. Okay. Thanks to actually the Obama administration that actually laid the foundation during the financial crisis. Okay. But I'm not going to get into politics. Okay. I'm not taking a stance here. Right. Just my own <clears throat> uh, opinion uh, based on economics, not based on politics. Okay, guys. All right, so let's take a look at some charts. You can see that this is the inflation index that has remained pretty sanguine, pretty uh, consistent. And interest rates, you can see, have been really falling. Okay, this is a 10-year U.S. Treasury yield, which is the yield on U.S. Treasury bonds at an all-time low. Okay, on a very clear downtrend with very, very low interest rates. And you can see unemployment rate steadily going down, right? The US is doing really a great job in creating jobs. Okay, let's go to Asia. So I'm in Singapore, and Singapore did really well, actually. Actually, it did better than I expected. I expected Singapore I was moderately bullish, but Singapore market actually had its best run in about five years, okay? So the Singapore STI was up 18% in 2017. And again, for those of you who have been following the Investors Inner Circle, which is the Wealth Academy Club, coming to our regular meetings, you're getting my emails, you've been following me, you know that this was a very, very clear buy point in the Singapore market, right? When you see that the 50 moving average crosses above the 150 moving average, that is a signal of a new uptrend. So that is when most of my students started buying during the change in trend and they wrote the trend up all the way for a very nice 18% return in 2017. And I expect it to continue in 2018. But I'll talk about it in a short while. This was the Malaysian market. Malaysian market was really choppy. And again, you can see it signaled an uptrend in early of 2017. So Malaysia was in a very clear uptrend over there. Then in the middle of the year, it started going to a consolidation. Okay, and it reversed into a downtrend actually over here as you can see from the moving averages. And suddenly, <laughs> well, some people say it's because of politics, the elections are coming in Malaysia, I don't know why, but you have this sudden parabolic jump in uh, Malaysian equities that caught everyone off guard, right? So Malaysia was a very tough market to trade. But of course, if you just buy and help uh, Malaysian equities, we up 9.7% in 2017, okay? Uh, moderate, moderate gains compared to the rest of Asia. Hong Kong did really well. And again, you can see that over here was a very clear uptrend signal as well. As you can see, the 50 is above the 150 moving average. And Hong Kong, can see, has a very nice uptrend 
as the price goes up, it retraces, boom, boom, bouncing off the 50 moving average, right? So there's a very easy trade, bounce off the 50, buy, 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 and continue the trend going up. 35% return in Hong Kong. So my students, some of them trading Hong Kong equities and indices did really, really well. Uh, well done for that. I don't trade Hong Kong, by the way, but many of my students trade the Hong Kong markets as well, okay? All right, so I'd like to say a very big thank you to my students who actually voted for us in 2017, who made a lot of money and who, are, who love our analysis of the markets. And they voted us once again as the most preferred financial educator in Singapore uh, in the Share Investor Awards. This was 2016. And 2017, again, we won the most preferred financial educator and most preferred investment speaker award uh, for if I'm not wrong, four to five years running. So thank you for your faith in us and it's been a fantastic run. We'll continue to serve you and to help you to grow your wealth and income in the years to come. And because we enjoy doing that, our motto has always been empowering retail investors to profit like the professionals. In fact, better than the professionals. And I'm really happy to know that so many of my students all around the world have done so well in 2017 who have made so much money for themselves and have grown their portfolio, you know, many of them beating professional fund managers. And I'd like to especially mention some of my students who I think deserve some recognition because of their tremendous hard work in applying the strategies and doing really well. It's not about luck, it's about strategies. And one of the first students I'd like to mention is actually Felix Chiang. He's from Malaysia and he came to the program about a year ago and he's one of the most hardworking students that I know. Because, you know, he has sent me emails almost every single week, okay, or day initially, and asking questions after questions, and I was really happy to answer his questions. He was very actively participating in our chat groups, um, in both the Wealth Academy and Wealth Academy professional chat groups, and has contributed a lot to the community. So I'm really happy for him. He's done really well, and he sent me a message a couple of days ago on Telegram saying, Hi Adam, thanks for teaching your teaching on Wealth Academy and Wealth Academy Professional, I managed to achieve close to 60% return last year. In fact, if you take a look at his um, performance report, you can see that uh, he made a cumulative return of 59.57% um, for this year. So that's a fantastic return, 59.57% for the year, beating, in fact, the index benchmarks. Fantastic. And this was an email that I got uh, actually in August of 2017 by Kenny and he said hi Adam good day it's been nine months of live trading I've officially doubled my initial capital even though my hit rate is just 50% and that's the beauty of my trading systems you don't have to be right a hundred percent of the time in fact if you're just right 50% of the time you're making a lot of money because when you're wrong you lose very little when you win you win more than you lose and so the point is about money management. It's not about being right all the time. He said, I'm very glad I attended Wealth Academy program last year. It was one of the few absolutely right decisions I've made. This equipped me with a recession-proof skill set. And I just got an update from Kenny at, after the year ended, and he actually more than doubled his, his returns. In fact, uh, he increased his um, portfolio from 10000 to about 31000 US dollars a 214% return in 2017. If you take a look at his statistics, you can see that his, his win rate was just 49.5%. And, you know, and he just won less than half, but his average wins, as you can see, were a lot more than his average losses. Okay? His average win was $1,500 US dollars. His average loss was $700. So as long as you win more than you lose, you can grow your account pretty uh, tremendously. And this was another email from uh, Mr. N.H. Wong, who made back 10 times of his cost fee in just one trade. And this was sent again, you know, at the end of 2017. Hi Adam, I'd like to share with you this exciting experience with my first trade since attending Wealth Academy Mastery in Kuala Lumpur 2017. Had just disposed a stock of a profit of nearly six digits, 60% return on investment and paid 10 times of my cost fee, all right, surely really good, you know. And this was another email I got from Min Yung, uh, who's from Vietnam, okay. And he said, Dear Adam, I'd like to send you my deepest appreciation from the bottom of my heart. 
I'm now a full-time trader. I can go anywhere and work anytime I want. I just spent two hours a day and I made more than 60% return last year on his investment. I, have, I had zero financial background. I decided to use my year's hard-earned savings to pay for the program, although it cost more than six months my salary. <laughs> In Vietnam, the average salary is 500 US a month. So he had to invest six times his salary to attend my life program, but now he has made back many times of his investment. This is his um, financial report from Interactive Brokers. You can see he made a 62.49% return. And this was from another student, Ching Hao, who sent me this email a couple of days ago. Hi Adam, I'd like to express my gratitude towards your investment learning course. I started with a small capital of 10,000 US dollars. My profit may be small, but I obtained an 80% return in one year. Okay, so it was fantastic. Look at, look at his performance report. You can see he made an 84.3% return in just one year, you know, uh, from 10,000 to about $18,000. And again, not many professional fund managers can increase your wealth by 84%. And my students who had no financial backgrounds but had all the strategies and hard work were able to beat the markets tremendously. It's so a final email I'd like to share with you from Dexter. And he said, Hi, I attended your seminars eight years back. <laughs> Wanted to say I utilized the principles and achieved a few things in my life. I achieved a six-figure portfolio at the age of 22 with more than 40% returns. Can you imagine at 22 years old having a six-figure portfolio? How many students can do that? Achieving more than a 40% return last year. And not only that, not only did he make so much money, but as a student, he was awarded a scholarship and was on a dean's list in his school, the Singapore Polytechnic. So I'm here to tell you that with the right strategies, you can achieve tremendous growth in your portfolio and in your life as well. Yeah? So let me ask you this question, okay? If the markets you know, went up in 2017, did everyone out there make money? And I tell you the answer is no. There are many people I know who did not make money in 2017. In fact, they lost money in 2017. How is that possible that all the markets went up? Right? US went up, Asia went up, but there are people who did not make money. And the reason is because they did not invest. They didn't buy or maybe they went short the market. And the reason many of the general public or a lot of the general public did not invest was because as usual, they get distracted by reading the news. And I always tell my students, do not read the news and listen to the opinions of so-called experts because they are always wrong. In fact, if you had read news on certain sites, they would say, like for example, on CNBC, um, this was published uh, and, you know, it's in 2017. They said the 2017 chart of the stock market looks eerily similar to the one that crashed 30 years ago. Right In this publication called Banyan Hill, they said 80% stock market crash to strike in 2017, economists warns, warns okay? January 2nd, 2018. And you know, the trouble is when you read all these bad news and your mind gets infected and biased by all these people's opinions, you end up not taking action. So I always say that no one can predict the future. So there's no use listening to the predictions of other people. The way to make money is to just follow the trend. And if you do that, you will do really well. So lessons, ignore the noise of the market, the opinions of other people, the predictions of gurus. Right? I'm not here to make predictions here. I'm just giving you an outlook and opportunities based on fundamentals and technical research. But ultimately, you have to invest and trade based on your own entry and exit rules that I will teach you in the different courses or that you've learned already from my courses okay so always follow the market trend do not attempt to outsmart the market and attempt to predict uh, when the market will change because we never know I find every time I, I attempt to outsmart the market the market will give me a slap on the face all right as long as you follow the market you know you will make money over time and I give you an example it was very clear that 2017 was a very bullish market looking at the trend the uptrend but there were people who attempted to outsmart the market and say, no, 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 no. I don't think the market is going to go up. Although it's an uptrend, I think the trend will reverse down, right? They attempted to outsmart the market and say, okay, you know, because Trump is elected, you know, Trump's 
Election is going to be a disaster, the market is going to crash, and they shorted the market. There are people who shorted the market and lost money because they attempted to outsmart the market. So never outsmart the market. Follow the market and you will do really well. And that's uh, what I share and I teach in all my programs. Okay. So with that, with 2017 over, let's look at 2018. What is now my forecast and the opportunities for 2018 where in the financial markets can we place our bets? Let's take a look at it right now. All right, so let's take a look at what are the opportunities for 2018 and what's my forecast for this new year. Well, first of all, I believe that there'll be sustained economic growth in 2018. Growth looks good all around the world. So again, I look at sustained economic growth for both advanced economies like the US, uh, UK, Europe, Japan, and emerging economies, especially in Asia. So what are the key drivers that's growing the global economy right now? Well, the first would be increased capital spending by companies. Many companies, especially uh, MNCs, have high levels of cash to be deployed. There's good business confidence and there's tight capacity constraints. So a lot of companies will be investing to increase their capacity for the new year. I look for a lot of global mergers and acquisitions because, again, strong global economy, high cash levels, and low financing costs means companies will be looking to buy smaller companies to merge to create bigger entities, especially in the healthcare sector. Next, a lot of millennials are coming of age. Those who were born in the year 2000, millennials, like, you know, uh, my kids are millennials, right? But they're the later millennials. So the earlier millennials, they are now going into their uh, late teens and early 20s. So many of these millennials are now coming into the marketplace as investors, as consumers and trendsetters. So... Uh, that will increase consumption and investment demand for assets. Next, we are looking at quantitative exit by the European Central Bank and the Federal Reserve. Uh, in the past, we talked about quantitative easing, which means the Federal Reserve was lowering interest rates and pumping in money to create liquidity. So now, uh, these, these European Central Banks, the Federal Reserve, they are now exiting in terms of increasing interest rates and tight, tightening monetary supply, uh, which means it's a reflection of stronger economic growth. Next, US politics and policies. Uh, with the Republican administration, we are looking at, again, reduced corporate taxes and financial deregulation of banks that, again, will drive earnings growth. So all these are the growth drivers that's going to drive growth in 2018 and beyond. If you take a look at some charts, this shows you how Global trade has been recovering and rising over the years. This chart shows you how the investment cycle is also recovering as investments are really in a very strong uptrend. So global trade is on an uptrend. Investment uh, cycle is also on a clear uptrend. If you take a look at the different um, economies, again, the US is projected to grow at, again, 2.5%. Uh, the world as a whole, about 3.6%, and a lot of it, again, being driven by emerging markets and developing Asia, is going to grow at 6.3%. The euro is, uh, Euro's, uh, Eurozone area is going to grow at about 1.6% thereabouts. This is another forecast, as you can see, uh, in a table firm format. The US, again, projected to grow at 2.5%. Uh, Eurozone at 2%, um, Japan 1.3%, uh, China at 6.5% as usual, and emerging markets, especially in India, 7.5% uh, growth, um, Brazil and Russia at 25 and 1.8% uh, respectively. So we know there's growth. Question is, are markets too expensive right now? Have stock prices gone up too high that they are unsustainable? that you're buying at too high a price. Well, one way to tell if markets are expensive or cheap or fairly priced is to look at the index P-E ratio. So what you see here is the uh, P-E ratio or the price earnings ratio of the S&P 500 index, which is the US market, over the last uh, almost 100 years, in fact, All right, from 1929 to 2014. Right? And I'll show you a more updated slide in a while. So what you're seeing here is 
on the y-axis the PE ratio and on the y-axis sorry on the x-axis you have got um, the last hundred years okay and what you notice is that when the market is uh, at a high right when a market's at a bubble it's gonna crash so these are we call the market tops when a market is at the top right market tops market tops market tops and you can see that at market tops, where is the P-E ratio? The P-E ratio is about 25 to a high of about 30, right? Which means that when the P-E ratio is between 25 to 30, the market is near the top, right? And likely to come back all the way down. After a market crash, notice that the P-E ratio is over here at about 5, okay? And the mean P-E ratio in the last 100 years is 15. So again, what does P-E ratio mean? P-E stands for price of the market, which means market prices, the price of the stocks, divided by the earnings of the company. Okay. So what happens is that when the stock market is at the top, prices are very high relative to earnings. So PE is very high, which is mean which means 25 to 30. After market crash, prices are very low relative relative to earnings. So again, low means a PE of 5 or between 5 to 10. Okay? And the mean PE is 15. So by looking at the current PE ratio of the market, we can tell are we near the top or are we near the bottom or are we fairly priced? Okay, so take 15 as a rough gauge for the U.S. markets. Uh, but for emerging markets with higher growth than the U.S., we can take the mean to be about 18 to 20. All right, so anything above uh, 20 would be a bit overvalued. Below 20 would be undervalued. So let's take a look at where markets are right now based on valuations. So if you take a look, this is a latest snapshot from Bloomberg. And if you look at the Hong Kong markets, right, that's the Hong Kong Hang Seng, the P-E ratio is 14. 14. Again, what's the mean? 15, right? 25 to 30 is really expensive. 5 is really cheap. 15 is fair. So the Hong Kong market, despite its 30% uh, increase in 2017, the P-E ratio remains at 14, which means Hong Kong is still cheap. Okay, Hong Kong is still cheap. Uh, if you take a look at Shanghai, it's at 16, it's considered cheap as well because Shanghai is a high growth market. So the average PE should be about uh, should be about 19 to 20. So 16 is really cheap. The Singapore market, STI, Straits Times Index, at 11 is dirt cheap as well. The Singapore is really cheap as well. Uh, Malaysia is also cheap as well. So you can see that Asia, emerging markets are really cheap right now. So I'm not surprised if uh, Asian stock prices, again, double from here, okay? Uh, if you take a look at US markets, the S&P 500 is at 22 PE ratio right now, 22, and the Dow is at 20. So you can see that the US markets are not cheap, okay? They are not at 15. They are, but they are not at extremely expensive valuations of tw uh, 25 to 30, but they are uh, at 22 to 20, which means that they are expensive, but not extremely expensive yet. So I still expect U.S. prices, uh, stock prices to rise, but not as much as Asia or emerging markets. Okay. So again, to summarize, valuations are high in certain areas, especially the U.S., but not at extreme levels yet. So what is expensive? Jakarta and the U.S. markets. What's at fair value? Hang Seng, Shanghai, and Vietnam. Fair value. Okay, uh, what's really cheap would be Singapore and Malaysia. So again, this is a more updated chart of the S and P five hundred to twenty seventeen, or rather early twenty eighteen. And again, our current P E ratio is about twenty two point four five. Okay, at twenty five we are getting pretty expensive. At thirty we are really expensive. Remember that. At fifteen we are. At fair value. Now, in the last 10 years, the average P ratio has gone up to about 16.4. So currently we're at 22.45, which means 
we still have room to run to about 25 to 30. Okay, so again, I expect the US market to continue going up in price. So it's not cheap, but it's not too expensive yet. All right, so I'll still write the trend up. There's still money to be made. Now, so that's on the fundamental perspective. So fundamentally, US markets are strong. US markets are not too expensive yet, but they're not cheap, okay? From a technical perspective, you can see that the US market is on a very clear uptrend. So again, as long as it's on an uptrend, you stay long, you keep buying, you keep holding, right it to the end of the trend, okay? And later on, I'll talk about how do you identify a change in trend? How do we anticipate a recession before it happens by looking at the price trend change, okay? So the S&P is on a clear uptrend. And if you're looking to buy into the S&P, I would say the ideal time is to wait for the price to come back to the 50 moving average. So the 50 moving average is always a nice time to buy where it finds support before the next run up. Don't enter when it's too far from the moving average. Because like a rubber band, when the price gets too far from the moving average, it tends to snap back, right? It goes too fast, snaps back, too fast, snaps back, too fast, snaps back. Wait for the snap to the 50 moving average, okay? But the moment the trend changes, you've got to get out. You've got to exit. You've got to sell the moment it changes. So I'll keep you informed through my videos, through my courses, through the training, okay? The Singapore market looks really nice. Again, Singapore's really cheap. It's on a very clear uptrend, as you can see, based on the charts, making higher highs, Okay, again, the 50 moving average remaining above the 150. You can see very strong support at the 150 moving average. So again, I would love to buy more when it hits the 150 moving average. Buy more as it hits its retracement levels and you catch the new uh, impulse wave pattern up. And again, if it ever reverses into a downtrend, you got to get out. And again, you learn exactly how to do it in the training, all right? Which I think most of you have attended. If you have not, you got to come for the Wealth Academy training program.